Welcome everyone to this session. David Luck, the mic is yours. Thank you very much indeed. And welcome to everybody. My name is David Locke. I'm Secretary General of the Magna Carta Observatory. And it's my pleasure to introduce this session. The title of the session is Strengthening Universities and Their Service to Society Through Values. How the Magna Carta can help. The order of our session is that I will say a few words of introduction, briefly introduce Magna Carta uh, 2022, uh, but we will say more about that later on. We will describe the Living Values Project. We will look at student engagement, and then after some closing remarks, there will be the opportunity for you to put questions and to have some discussion. Please put your questions in the chat box. And if you could put them as early as possible, that will help us to sort and group questions where that would be helpful. Just by way of introduction, the Magna Carta Universitatum was signed for the first time in 1988 in Bologna. There were many issues in Europe in particular, but also in other places of the world, where universities were coming under pressure and were not able to operate in an autonomous or optimal way. And so this document was signed by 388 universities. And that has been the document which has united what are now almost 950 universities across the world. In 2000, an observatory was established and it was established to help where universities were coming under pressure or where aspects of the Magna Carta were not capable of being observed. But it also helped by continuing to research and share experience and so on, and to enable its signatories. The, universe, the observatory exists to aid universities. And so we like to think of signatories as a community and a community which aids each other. And we organize workshops across the world and an anniversary celebration, which can be quite a large gathering. But we realized that we actually needed to do more to help universities. So in 2018, we established the Living Values Project, which does what it says on the tin. It helps universities to identify and to live in accordance with their values. And Marcelo will be saying more about that later on. And then in 2018, again, we realized that the original Magna Carta, while it was still a strong document and still useful, didn't really reflect all the changes that had taken place in society since 1988. And so consequently, a working group was established, which included Marta and Tamiris, to review what had changed and to advise on how the Magna Carta should change. And you'll be hearing more about that later on. But before I hand to them, I think it might be helpful just to show you the five main points of the 1988 Magna Carta. University is an autonomous institution. Research and teaching must be morally and intellectually independent of all political authority and economic power. Teaching and research must be 
inseparable. Freedom, academic freedom, as we would shorthand it, um, in research and training is a fundamental principle of university life and that universities should attain university universal knowledge and transcend geographical and political frontiers. Now, to present to you this afternoon, we have three people. Uh, Professor Marcelo Noble is a member of the Magna Carta's Governing Council. He has just stood down as rector uh, from the University of Campinas. And his university was one of the first to engage with the Living Values Project, and he led that project. Marta Lozada was a member of the drafting group for Magna Carta 2020. She's Professor of Physics and the Dean of Science at New York University, Abu Dhabi. Prior to that, she was President of Université Antonio Narino in Colombia. And then our final speaker will be Tamires Gomez Sampino, who was a member of the drafting group for Magna Carta 2020. She's a lawyer, master in political and economic law, and president of the Law Students Union at McKinsey Presbyterian University, and vice president of the National Union of Students in Brazil. She's also had quite extensive international uh, involvement. But I'll be back to say a little bit more about that. So, Martin, can I please hand to you? Thank you, David. Um, so let me start by um, speaking a little bit about the motivations to, to modify the Magna Carta Universitatum. David uh, has mentioned a few of these, but I'd like to uh, reinforce some of the ideas. So the first thing is that it was realized that much had changed since uh, 1998 in the higher educational landscape. In fact, higher education was much more international and the observatory itself was operating in a much more global way. At the same time, other values were becoming really important within higher education. And in addition to this, workshops that had been performed in different places around the world had kind of highlighted that the MCU was outdated. Next slide, please. So here is the full list of the uh, review committee members, starting with uh, Seibel Norda, the, who was at the time the president of the MCO Council, president emeritus of the University of Amsterdam, Patrick Dean. Um, at the time, he was the president and vice chancellor of McMaster University. He's now president of Queen's University in Canada, and he's now the current president of the MCO Council. Tamires Gomez, you'll hear from, from Tamires a little bit later on, uh, as David was mentioning, um, representing National Union of Students in Brazil. Uh, we had Eva Ibram Polek, also a former Secretary General of the International Association of Universities. Uh, she's also, she was also a member of the MCO Council at the time. Um, we had a representative from Asia through Professor Chanita Ruxpongwang, uh, from Thailand, Professor Naren Bajnath, uh, representing Africa, being the CEO of the Council on Higher Education in South Africa, myself, and um, from Europe, Professor Francesco Bertini, the rector of the University of Bologna. Next, please. So some of the goals of the review were really to uh, address how higher education uh, is really involved in societal issues and sustainability, and which are the responsibilities of university to society through values that are relevant for the future. It also wanted to facilitate a wide and global discussion on these issues and what was the adequacy of the new version of the Magna Carta in responding to them. So there were a series of ways in which you know, the community at large could provide input. Uh, associations also provided direct input 
into um, this process. There were presentations made, even in the CAE of 2019, there was a presentation made also and discussed about this. There's also the Magna Carta Observatory Conference and many other venues in which it was presented and, and was really sought for feedback from the community at large. Uh, at the end of the process, this uh, new version of the Magna Carta Universitatum was approved by the Governing Council in March 2020, before I would say so much in our all of our lives changed really drastically. Um, but I think that there are elements in the Magna Carta Universitatum that were really very much forward looking. So next please, uh, David. So it has two um, big parts. The, the document, Magna Carta Universitatum 2020, it starts with a preamble. In this preamble, there is a uh, declaration and affirmation of the fundamental principles um, that were signed in 1988. And it really is stated again that this is what the mission of universities should be based on. And, and David walked you through what were those five fundamental principles. So I'm not gonna go through them again, but very quickly, you know, independence is one of them, teaching and research, um, and the university is a site for free inquiry and debate, distinguished by its openness to dialogue and rejection of intolerance. On the other hand, um, it is recognized that universities upholding these principles could take on many different forms, much more diverse uh, university landscape um, due to the influence of culture, geography, and history. At the same time, we recognize that we are now in a much more networked, networked world in which knowledge and influence should cross cultural boundaries in the pursuit of human understanding. Next, please. The world had, since 1988, become much more interconnected. Not only had universities proliferated around the globe, dramatically increasing in variety, as well as in scope and mission, but there was also much a larger increase in the number of students, the diversity of students seeking a university education and the reasons for seeking that education and the expectations of their families and communities had also um, been increased. A huge in, uh, increase in the intellectual prop production by universities through publications, for example, while at the same time, trust in academia was being eroded by a loss of confidence and expertise. At the same time, in the sway of new technologies, modes of learning, teaching and research were changing very rapidly and universities are both leading and responding to these developments. And I have to say that the last year and a half has shown that universities have done so. Despite all of these changes, it was clear the potential of higher education continues to be a positive agent of change and social transformation endures. The principles laid out in MCU are as valid today as they were in 88, and they are a necessary precondition for human advancement through inquiry, analysis, and sound action. It requires that the global academy will identify responsibilities and com commitments and that the signatories agree are vital to you to universities that these are vital to universities around the world in the 21st century, and this was really one of the main reasons for this new declaration so that's the preamble. And now here it comes to really state very clearly what are the principles values and responsibilities on the first hand the universities acknowledge their responsibility to engage and respond to aspirations and challenges of the world and to the communities that they serve to benefit humanity and to contribute to sustainability. Secondly, intellectual and moral autonomy is the hallmark of any university and a precondition for its fulfillment of its responsibilities to society. That independence needs to be recognized and protected by governments and society at large and defended vigorously by institutions themselves. On the other hand, to fulfill their potential, universities require a reliable social contract with civil society, one which supports pursuit of the highest possible quality of academic work with full respect for institutional autonomy. At the same time, as universities create and disseminate knowledge, 
Okay, they question dogmas and established doctrines and encourage critical thinking in all of its community. Academic freedom continues to be its lifeblood and open inquiry and dialogue, their nourishment. Universities embrace their duty to teach and undertake research ethically and with integrity, producing reliable, trustworthy, and accessible results. Universities also have a civic role and a, re a responsibility. They are part of a global collegial network of scientific inquiry and scholarship, building on shared bodies of knowledge and contributing to their development. But at the same time, they are embedded in their local cultures and are crucially relevant to the future and enrichment. So while that they are immersed in and connected with global developments, they engage fully and assume leading roles in their local communities and ecosystems. Very importantly, universities are non-discriminatory spaces of tolerance and respect, where diversity of perspectives should flourish, where inclusivity anchored in principles of equity and fairness will prevail. They commit themselves to advance equity and fairness in all aspects of academic life including admissions, hiring, and promotion practices. Education is a human right, a public good, and should be available to all. Universities recognize that learning is a lifelong activity with tertiary education as one part of the continuum. Within that one part, universities serve diverse learners at all stages of their lives. Next. And universities acknowledge that individuals and communities, often due to inequitable circumstances, have difficulty gaining access to higher education or influencing the modes and matter of academic study. So to realize human potential everywhere, universities deliberately seek ways to welcome and engage with diverse voices and perspectives. This last point crucial about access and responding to societal needs. So by signing the Magna Carta Universitatum 2020, universities declare their commitment to the original declaration and to upholding and advancing the principles, values, and responsibilities stated above, so as to strengthen the role of universities in promoting health, prosperity, and enlightenment around the world. That is really the full text of the Magna Carta Universitatum 2020, which I think did a great job in addressing the societal issues, the big changes that had happened over 30 years since the first Magna Carta Universitatum. So I will now pass it on to Marcelo. Well, thank you, Marta, for the introduction. And thank you, David. It's a pleasure to be here among friends. I, I will tell you a little bit about the what the a practical uh, exercise let's say that a magna carta uh, or observatory has done in many universities around the world uh, it's a, a a very interesting uh, model and it's a wonderful example how magna carta can help to improve the discussions uh, within the university so please uh, next uh, david uh, just to make uh, very quickly, I will show you a little bit about my university so you can learn, uh, you can understand the context. Uh, I was the director of the University of Campinas, Unicamp in Brazil. Uh, please, next. Uh, it's a public university. We have about uh, 40,000 students in total. Uh, it's a, 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 a research. Uh, intensive university here in Brazil, considered one of the best in Latin America. Next, please. Uh, and there are uh, about 1,800 1, faculty members. There, there we have a staff of about 8,000 people. And it's, a, it's considered a very good university in, in Brazil. Please, next. The, the point is that we wanted to to learn a little bit more about our values, which are the real, real values shared by our community, the value 
the values that we must incorporate. Of course, the mission of the university is 50 years old. Maybe we should think about that, the vision, the mission, what the, the, the community expects from the university. And of course, something that is really relevant, the expectations that the society uh, 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 is hoping for us. So what we did, we prepared a, a reference document with the definition of consensus concepts uh, by a, a group. We made a workshop of validation of these values and definitions, the perceptions, uh, values, experience at Unicamp. Of, we, we invited to this workshop all the community, uh, members from all sectors of the community, and we tried to align this discussion with the, the university strategic planning cycle. Please, next. So here, uh, uh, an example of the of the workshop we discussed it. Here is Eva Egron Pollack from uh, from the Magna Carta that went the, to 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 the campus to help us. Please next. Uh, and the the participants of the workshop discussed it, the original core values, the institutional autonomy, autonomy, the academic freedom of the Magna Carta. Uh, uh, we discussed it, which values of this carta the 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 next. One was not available yet, but we discussed it, how these values are still valid or not. And we, we made a kind of, you know, a, a very deep discussion and we tried to prioritize several values, uh, including a, a social responsibility, accountability, uh, and other, other values that were not present in the original Magna Carta. Next, please. Uh, later, the, the participants were uh, assembled in groups, and we continued to discuss. This workshop was about three days long, uh, and, and it was really, really uh, interesting. Which are the difficulties? How is the, uh, the successful experience at the university? What action should be taken to reduce these difficulties? And so on. Next, please. And then we uh, ended up with a new list of values. Of course, I will not go into the detail of every single value here, but we have we reached many interesting uh, uh, examples and ideas uh, from this workshop, the social responsibility, the institutional autonomy, the accountability, academic freedom. Some of them, of course, were already mentioned in the original Magna Carta the academic rigor and excellence. And next, please. Uh, sustainability, which was a really, really new concept uh, uh, that was not present in the original text. Uh, and the what we call the inclusive excellence, the commitment to develop citizens who understand the words in its wideness and their place in it, promoting the social and intellectual development of the community and valuing the cultural difference brought to the institutional experience, which improves it. Next one, please. Uh, other values, equity, diversity, integrity, uh, mean, meaning honesty, uh, creativity, the looking ahead, the, the future vision of the university always uh, thinking ahead of the society uh, and the institutional commitment, the priority commitment to the institution's defined principles, values, mission, and strategy. Next, please. Uh, so we ended up with this new list of values from the university web, uh, point of view. Uh, these values are relevant because the, the, the university is a public university free of charge. Uh, it's an autonomous university uh, supported by the taxes, by, by the, the uh, paid by, 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 by our society. And uh, we have to fit of, uh, also with the institutional culture. It's a research oriented, uh, innovative, uh, focusing on entrepreneurship and also inclusive and socially driven universities. So all the concepts uh, must fit together. So having uh, the new list of values, 
we uh, made this, this list available to all the university to, the, to, to improve the discussion in different sectors. And then uh, we proposed a survey to the university, to the whole university in order to further discuss the, the, each of these single values. The idea was then to discuss this together with the strategic planning uh, and support the strategic planning of the university and think about uh, how we could change our vision, our mission uh, that would be really uh, relevant for the community as a whole. So this is an idea of a, a, a practical project that we made together with Magna Carta Observatory. And it was an extremely interesting point uh, that uh, I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you. So next one is Tamiris, please Tamiris. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you, Marta, David. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I'm here now to talk about the importance of the engagement of students in the build of the new Magna Carta. So uh, this two picture is the one, the first one is the final plenary of the National Students Union Congress of here in Brazil in 2017. And the second one is the reading of the Bergen Declaration in 2016 in Norway, Bergen. Oh, next, please. Uh, I will start uh, talking about the Bergen Declaration because it's uh, a declaration that was writing for by students from all over the world in a seminar uh, that was based in Norway, Bergen. Uh, and the Bergen Declaration uh, was that was drafted and agreed on by the participant of National Students Union. Uh, and the declaration has representatives, students representatives from South America, North America, Europe, Africa, Asia, and the Pacific in May of 2016. Next, please. Uh, so the main points of the Berger Declaration is uniting for a global student voice, education as a human right, uh, a student's right, like quality education, student organization and autonomy of the student organization also, uh, access to tertiary education, so education as a public and universal good, uh, sustainability, mobility and safety, uh, and the need uh, of the organization of a global organization of a student. So that global student voice, a global student forum. Next, please. Um, when we talk about that, like the relation of the MCU of 1988 and in the students, we have one point that each university must with due allowance for a particular circumstance, ensure that its students' freedoms are safeguarded and they enjoy concessions in which they can acquire the culture and training which it is their purpose to possess. So th that is the phrase that uh, the MCU 88, the first one, uh, talk about students. And uh, we have, in the MCU 2020, we have more uh, space that we can talk about. Like we have this a declaration affirmation of fundamental principle upon which mission of the universe should be based was signed. Uh, and here in Brazil, uh, we learned that the tripod that provides the basis for higher education is teaching research and extension. Uh, when we talk about the principle being implemented, uh, I should say that there is another trip of the direction, the professors and the students. So it's really important to get the students be engaged in the in this living values project as Marcelo uh, show us here and the, uh, the principles that Marta and David also show here for show here for us. Next, please. Uh, so worldwide, the students' movement calls for greater student participation in the directions of university. And when we include the students in the MCU 2020, we are recognizing them as fundamental part of implementing this principle. So uh, in the drafting group of the first Magna Carta, we didn't have students 
uh, helping and talking and um, about our main struggles. But in the second one, in the MCU 2020, I was uh, a student representative and we have opportunity to discuss um, with students, leaders from all over the world about these principles and about this new document and what uh, that we as students leaders uh, think that it's fundamental um, as a principle to be implemented in our university. So next, please. Uh, so we have some some quotes of the new Magna Carta. So the second one was the teaching and research should be inseparable with students engaged in the search for knowledge and greater understanding. Uh, we talk about also the global number of and diversity of students seeking uh, universal education has increased because in the past few years we have an increase in the access actually of higher education. And we have also a quote about uh, how university questions and dogmas uh, were establishment and the need of the university of, of, of a space that encourage critical thinking in our students and scholars. So next please. That, that quote I, I put um, because it's really important for the student movement, uh, the university as a space that are non-discriminatory and that respect the diversity of per perspective and flourish and where inclusivity anchored in principle of equality and fairness prevails. And this point and the education as a human right, a public good and that should be available for all and a university that serve diverse learners at all stage of their life. This point for us, for us as a student leaders, it's very important. And I remember uh, our meetings when we talk about it because the student movement in all over the world, not just here in Brazil or in Latin America, but also in Africa, also in Europe, also in Asia, fight for um, the access, but not just the access, but also the retain, the remain the university. Um, and in the past years, we have a lot of kind of public policies or some of affirmative actions that gave access in university, in higher uh, school, to some part of society that was not available in past time to get there. So the diversity of the universe that of the university increased and we should create a space that this diversity is respected and that these students uh, has opportunity to to be there and to access the education and uh, to to have the the right to be in the university in you no know, so next one, please. Uh, so the, the final one is what the new MCU means for students is uh, recognition that we are part of the university, not only as passive subjects, but as active actors who are part of the constructions and implementations of the principles that MCU defends. So um, I will finish my presentation just talking that. I know that here we have rectors and we have professors and we have uh, directions of university, uh, mainly from Latin America, but also from uh, all over the world. And it's really important that uh, the students leaders from these universities being part of the, this, the living values project, being part of the reality of the university and that these students should be seen not just as uh, the object of the university, but also as active, active, active uh, persons from this space that also builds the universe, that also research in the universe, that also um, be part of the university. So thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, Tamaris, and um, thank you also um, to Marta and Marcelo. Um, just a couple of comments um, before I move on to the, the present slide. Um, Marta mentioned the role that universities play in society. And it's very clear that universities serve society and they serve students and there needs to be a sound contract in inverted commas between universities and the societies which they serve. The new Magna Carta is a guide to that contract. And what we find is that universities who have it have the basis for a meaningful discussion with the different agents of society that they deal with. And it's something which enables universities to engage into a deeper relationship, both with its agents outside of the university, but also with staff and with the elements of the university. In talking about the Living Values Project, Marcelo did a, a brilliant job in describing what happened in his university. Within the original pilot group of nine universities, there were some very different motives for universities being involved. Some universities were involved because they had problems and they weren't able to resolve those problems and so resorted to looking at their values as a way of resolving them and building up and going forward. In some cases, the issues were with students or the relationship with government, for instance. And by using the idea of values, by talking about values and by making values known, the universities were able to strengthen the way in which they did things. It is no, there is no point in having values that are generated by a marketing department that are not then reflected in the behavior of the staff of the university and so on. And the Living Values Project was created to enable that discussion. We can say more about that um, in response to questions. And could I please invite you to put your questions in the chat? While you're doing that, I appreciate that some of your universities may already be signatories of the Magna Carta Universitatum. Increasingly, uh, more universities are signing the new Magna Carta, giving a, a total community of around 950 universities. For those of you that are in universities that have not yet signed the Magna Carta, you might be asking, well, why should we do that? Well, in the times that we live in, where change is happening more quickly and more unpredictably, and when the leaders of universities are less able to look back at precedent as a basis for making decisions, universities increasingly have to resort to their values look at the situations which they are facing and evaluate proposed solutions in terms of their congruence with the values which they espouse. If your university is a signatory of the Universitatum, then you are saying to the public very clearly that values are important to you. 
And that should give the, com the public and your community confidence in your integrity because you have considered that position and you have signed up to it. Also, increasingly, universities enter into partnerships with other universities around the world for research projects, exchange of students, and so on. One of the elements of successful partnerships between universities is that each should have confidence in the other. And if both of those universities are signatories of the Magna Carta, then they each know the values held by the other. Sometimes in the world, there are issues which are a little bit ugly for universities or very difficult for universities. And there have been some of these where the Magna Carta Observatory has been concerned. And with the support of its community, it has voiced views. And in some situations, there has been a change of heart. We work with other international bodies, such as Scholars at Risk, in pursuing these causes. And there's no doubt that when uh, a Minister of Education sees that uh, an expression of opinion or appeal or something like that is supported by almost a thousand universities or a group of almost a thousand universities, then that opinion has some weight. And by signing the Magna Carta, you will become a part of that. Next, the values that universities might have set 15 or 20 years ago might still be right, but times have changed. And it's not a bad discipline to review values from time to time. And the living values process, which is accessible completely free of charge, uh, is a way of doing that and a way which engages with your staff and through meetings which the Magna Carta Observatory organises so you would be able to meet with other universities doing the same sort of thing. And the combined effect of that is a reputational benefit for um, your university and what it does to enable it to play a stronger role in society. Now, there are other reasons as well, but we are quite constrained for time. So let me just say briefly, if you want your university to become a signatory, there is a website address on the next page um, that I will leave on the screen. And there it is on the top of that slide as well. And there you will see our admissions policy. You will see an application form. Complete that, obtain the supporting information which we seek. And then we have a committee which reviews the applications and gets back to the universities as quickly as we can. And then if you're accepted, you will be invited to come and sign the Magna Carta. Or nowadays, if you prefer not to travel, you can do that virtually. And those occasions are usually associated by quite a lot of publicity and engagement. So I hope that if you are not yet uh, a signatory, of the Magna Carta, uh, that you will think about becoming so. If you're not the person in your university who could make that decision, please write to your rector. If you need any additional information, there is an email address there, which uh, will 
enable which will put you in contact with us and we would be very pleased to help. Now I'm going to stop sharing and we don't as yet have any questions in the, the chat box, but I do have a comment directly to me, um, which says, Magna Carta Universitatum is now even more important because of the values approach. And I'm wondering um, if I can invite Marcelo and Marta in, in the first instance to just comment on that from their perspectives of in being rectors of universities, how times have changed and how values in practice have become more important. Marcelo, would you like to, to start on that? Yes, sure. <clears throat> well, we, I would like to add first uh, that uh, indeed we, we have most of the participants ha here from, uh, from Americas and mainly from Latin America. And I would say that uh, it's uh, really strange that the participation of uh, Latin American universities is rather uh, reduced in terms of, uh, you know, proportionally uh, in, in the Magna Carta uh, uh, signatories. So I would really stress uh, the necessity to have more uh, universities in our region signing the Magna Carta. It's a really important uh, document and the values that the, uh, the, the document proposed are really important around the world. Here, when I was rector, uh, there were a lot of attacks to universities during the last, uh, well, during all my term. And I usually used uh, and referenced the Magna Carta Universitatum as a, a fundamental document signed by well, but uh, at least 1,000 universities around the world saying that uh, the values of the universities are really, really crucial for the definition of university itself. The, the value of autonomy, the value of uh, intellectual uh, freedom, uh, the, the now updated the, the value that to serve society and to have a more direct relationship with society. So it's an important, uh, it's an important support in order to, to give an idea what uh, the university means to society and how the university can be supported by society. And not, it's unfortunately not always well understood by our, our politicians, by our governments. And sometimes it's necessary to to have this kind of international support in order to, to give uh, an idea that we are not alone, that we are uh, backed up by many, many other universities. universities. So this is mainly, in my opinion, the, the idea that we have uh, with this document. And of course, it was really interesting also, this uh, idea to, to participate in these living values and how, how this can initiate a conversation within the university regarding their own values, how the university sees itself in uh, uh, the community it serves. So this is really important. And I, I would really, really stress that it's uh, very important to participate in this network, in, 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 in these conferences, in these discussions for, for the common good. It's not always, uh, we, we usually don't stop to think about these core values that are the base of our universities. And it's really, really an, an important space to do that, uh, the participation in this network. So thank you. And Marta? Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, what I want to say, I think that is extremely important for the leadership of a universities to continuously uh, revive this, um, in, enhance discussion around values within their universities. And you can do it in so many different ways, especially when you're trying to uh, lead a, a change or a strategic plan 
for development of the university to keeping really that that beacon of what are the values um, that you should be guided for uh, by guided by and in and, and this updated version of Magna Carta Universitat and there, there are things that are stressed in addition to what Marcelo noted that I think are extremely important. The, the importance of academic integrity, the, the, the importance of trustworthy results provided to society as a result of the research and activity, academic activities that performed in the university. The, inclusion into you know, international networks in which you are really jointly with peers from all over the world contributing to advanced human understanding. The importance of being able to um, really be a space that is inclusive and non-discriminatory. That is really, really important. And the civic role and responsibility that is stressed so much in, in, the, in the new Magna Carta Universitatum. I think that all of those are aspects that are absolutely critical when you're trying to devise your new um, period of development in your university and you want to have your community completely, uh, you know, on board backing this, this process that you want to develop and not to lose yourself in the details without having clarity on what are your values. Thank you very much for that. I'd just like to add the example of a university in Moscow that was one of the original pilot group. And they participated fully as all of the pilots did. And when they evaluated the effect that that project had had within their own university, they asked, would a team from the observatory be prepared to go to Moscow and to work with 70 other Russian universities because that university felt that that project was so valuable in enabling it to use values internally and communicate values in terms of or with the people it worked with externally. And the then president of the observatory and I, we went to Moscow and we spent two days uh, with translators because neither of us spoke Russian. But I share that story with you so that you will know that it's not just the observatory saying this is a good thing, this is a useful thing, but universities who have used it have done so too. I'd like to come uh, to a, a matter concerning students and invite Tamires to, to, to comment. Um, one of the uh, original pilot uh, universities in Living Values did so because there were issues with students and there were issues about the government's expectations about the values that students would have. It's the University of Mauritius, the case is written up and it's on the, the MCO website. And students were indeed involved in the Living Values project there. And that university has offered all sorts of things to the Magna Carta Observatory because they too believe in the value of it. And they made a number of changes resulting to it. And yesterday I was participating in a session which was talking about the role of universities in ensuring a democracy and the democracy worked effectively. And one of the reasons why I wanted Tamiris to be part of our team today is that universities must serve their students well and engage their students. And Tamiris, by way of a last contribution, would you just like to say a little bit either about your experience or how you have seen that to be important? 
Yeah, sure. Um, I didn't say in my presentation, but uh, I am former president of the Law Students Union and former vice president of the National Students Union of Brazil. And I have the opportunity to uh, be part of uh, some international seminars of students because uh, in 2016, uh, when the Bagan Declaration was built, um, uh, we as a student movement in a global perspective uh, is start begin to organize um, a kind of global forum of students because we have here, we had here in Latin America, OCLAI, and we have EZU in Europe, we have our Africa Students Union in Africa, but we didn't have um, a global organization, global forum that reunite all the uh, continental and national students union in a global perspective to, to fight for access in education or something. And it's really interesting because in all international seminars of students that I was part, uh, the students leaders have um, the same problems with how that we can uh, dialogue with professors or how that we can dialogue with the university uh, was really few, few students leaders that have a good relationship with the direction of the university. And in the mailing of the time, the direction of the university didn't, um, didn't the, uh, how to say that, uh, authorize uh, the organization of students and it's crazy that because how that we can say that the university is really autonomous how that we can talk about academic freedom uh, or education as a public good if we don't have uh, the organization of the students in the university uh, being allowed you know and uh, the organization of the students in university can help the university uh, not not just uh, as the living values project, project say, but uh, we can help not in universe, but outside too, because as students leaders, uh, we can, we know like how the, the research, how that, what is being uh, talking and learn universe can be apply in our society too because we are living in society and we are facing the struggles that our society uh, are living to so uh, I think that, that I won't share <laughs> this uh, thank, you. And, thank yes. you very much in, indeed and thank you to you and to Marcelo and to Marta for being part of this panel today. Thank you to everybody here for joining the panel. I hope that we've um, persuaded you that um, strengthening universities and their service to society through values is important and that the Magna Carta will be able to help you. We'd be very pleased to hear from you and we wish you all well. Thank you very much indeed.